Have you ever noticed how some people just seem to radiate positivity and genuine happiness for others' successes? It's refreshing, isn't it? Well, forget about all that. Today we're diving into the murky waters of human nature, exploring the shadows where envy lurks and falsehood thrives. But wait, before you think this is just another feel-good video about spreading kindness and ignoring negativity, let me stop you right there. We're not here to sugarcoat reality or pretend that everyone has your best interests at heart. Instead, we're going to arm you with the tools to spot the green-eyed monster and unmask the deceivers in your life. You might be wondering, why focus on such negativity? Well, my friend, as the ancient Stoics taught us, true wisdom comes from seeing the world as it is, not as we wish it to be. And let's face it, in a world where social media highlight reels and carefully curated personas are the norm, being able to discern genuine intentions from false fronts isn't just useful, it's essential. So buckle up as we embark on a journey through the human psyche, guided by the timeless wisdom of Stoicism and modern psychological insights. In the next few minutes, we'll explore 13 ways to recognize envy and falsehood in others. From subtle body language cues to the art of decoding backhanded compliments, you'll learn to navigate the complex web of human interactions with the clarity of a stoic sage and the shrewdness of a modern psychologist. By the end of this video, you'll be equipped to spot the telltale signs of jealousy and dishonesty allowing you to make more informed decisions about who deserves your trust and energy. Before we dive deeper, if you're finding value in this content, consider leaving a comment, hitting that like button, or even subscribing to the channel. Your support helps us continue creating thought-provoking content that bridges ancient wisdom with modern challenges. Now let's unveil those hidden signs of envy and falsehood. 1. The Green-Eyed Glare Picture this, you've just shared some fantastic news with a friend, expecting a high-five or a genuine smile. Instead, you're met with a fleeting grimace, quickly masked by a forced grin. Congratulations, you've just witnessed the green-eyed glare in action. Envy, that sneaky emotion, often reveals itself through involuntary facial expressions before the person can hide it behind a facade of happiness. The ancient Stoics, like Marcus Aurelius, emphasized the importance of observing human behavior without judgment. In this spirit, let's explore the visual cues that betray envy. One telltale sign is the micro-expression, a brief, involuntary facial movement that lasts only a fraction of a second. When someone's genuinely happy for you, their entire face lights up. The eyes crinkle, the smile reaches their cheeks and there's a warmth in their gaze. But when envy's at play, you might catch a flash of tightened lips, narrowed eyes, or a slight furrowing of the brow before they compose themselves. Another visual cue to watch for is the direction of their gaze. An envious person might struggle to maintain eye contact, their eyes darting away or fixating on the object of their jealousy. If you've just shown off a new car, for instance, they might stare at it a bit too intently, their eyes betraying a mix of desire and resentment. Or they might suddenly become very interested in their phone, using it as a shield to hide their true feelings. Body language speaks volumes too. Watch for crossed arms, a subtle turning away of the body, or hands clenched into fists, these physical manifestations of discomfort often accompany feelings of envy. Remember, though, that context is key. A single cue doesn't necessarily indicate envy. It's the combination of multiple signs that paints a clearer picture. By honing your observation skills, you'll become adept at reading these visual cues, allowing you to navigate social interactions with greater awareness and empathy. After all, as Epictetus taught, it's not events themselves that disturb us, but our judgments about them. Understanding the root of someone's envy can lead to compassion rather than conflict. 2. Backhanded Compliments 
Wow, you're so brave to wear that outfit. Ever received a compliment that left you feeling slightly off kilter? Welcome to the world of backhanded compliments, the preferred weapon of the passively envious. These sneaky remarks masquerade as praise, but carry a sharp sting, revealing the speaker's true feelings of jealousy or resentment. Let's unpack this psychological sleight of hand and learn how to spot these veiled insults for what they really are. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This wisdom is particularly relevant when dealing with backhanded compliments. The key is to recognize the intent behind the words, rather than getting caught up in their surface meaning. A true compliment should make you feel genuinely good about yourself. If you're left feeling confused, insulted, or questioning yourself, chances are you've just been served a backhanded compliment. Common structures of backhanded compliments include the you're so X for a Y format, you're so articulate for someone from your background, the false surprise, I can't believe you actually pulled that off, and the comparison that puts others down, you're so much smarter than your brother, these formulations allow the speaker to maintain a veneer of politeness while expressing their envy or disapproval. By learning to identify these patterns, you can better protect yourself from their subtle negative impact. So, how do we respond to these verbal curveballs? The stoic approach would be to pause and reflect before reacting. Remember, the backhanded compliment often says more about the giver than the receiver. You might choose to ignore it, acknowledging that their opinion doesn't define your worth. Alternatively, you could address it directly, perhaps with a touch of humor. Thanks. I'm glad you noticed my outfit. I feel great in it. This approach maintains your dignity while gently calling out the underlying negativity. The goal isn't to engage in conflict, but to disarm the envy with grace and self-assurance. By doing so, you're not only protecting your own peace of mind, but potentially encouraging the other person to examine their own motivations. 3. The Comparison Game Ever notice that friend who can't help but turn every conversation into a competition? Oh, you got a promotion? Well, I just became the youngest VP in my company's history. Welcome to the comparison game, folks. A telltale sign of envy that's as old as humanity itself. This constant need to measure up isn't just annoying. It's a glaring red flag that someone's green with envy. The Stoic philosopher Seneca wisely noted, he is a great man who uses earthenware dishes as if they were silver but he is equally great who uses silver as if it were earthenware. This profound insight cuts to the heart of the comparison game. Those who are truly content don't feel the need to constantly stack their achievements against others. They understand that true worth comes from within, not from outshining those around them. So how does this comparison game manifest in everyday life? Watch for those who habitually one-up your experiences or achievements. If you mention a recent vacation, they'll quickly chime in with tales of their more exotic travels. Share a personal victory and they'll counter with a bigger win. It's as if they're keeping a mental scorecard, always striving to come out on top. This behavior stems from a deep-seated insecurity and a misguided belief that success is a zero-sum game. But here's the kicker, recognizing this pattern isn't about judging others. It's about understanding the underlying envy and protecting your own peace of mind. When you encounter a chronic comparer, remember that their behavior reflects their own insecurities, not your worth. Instead of getting drawn into their game, try channeling the stoic virtue of wisdom. Acknowledge their achievements without diminishing your own. You might say, that's fantastic. I'm glad we're both doing well in our careers. This response doesn't feed into the comparison trap, but instead promotes a sense of shared success. By refusing to play the game, 
you're not only maintaining your own equanimity, but also setting a powerful example of genuine confidence and contentment. 4. Schadenfreude Picture this. You've just shared some bad news. Maybe you missed out on a promotion or your startup idea flopped. Suddenly, you notice a glimmer in your friend's eye, a subtle upturn of their lips. They're trying to look concerned, but something's off. Congratulations, you've just witnessed schadenfreude in action. That twisted pleasure some people derive from others' misfortunes. It's Envy's ugly cousin, and it's a surefire sign that someone might not have your best interests at heart. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, when you hear that someone speaks ill of you, instead of trying to defend yourself, say, he surely does not know my other faults, else he would not have mentioned only these. This wisdom applies perfectly to dealing with schadenfreude. Those who take pleasure in your setbacks are often battling their own insecurities and failures. Understanding this can help you respond with compassion rather than anger. So how do you spot schadenfreude in the wild? Look for the mismatch between words and body language. While someone might say, Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, their tone might lack genuine empathy, their eyes might light up ever so slightly, or they might struggle to suppress a smile. Pay attention to how quickly they change the subject or how eagerly they spread your bad news to others. True friends commiserate. Those gripped by schadenfreude can't wait to share the juicy details of your misfortune. But here's the real question. How do we deal with these joy vampires? The stoic approach would be to maintain your equanimity. Remember, their reaction says more about them than it does about you. Instead of letting their subtle glee get under your skin, use it as an opportunity for self-reflection. Are you similarly affected by others' successes or failures? This awareness can help you cultivate a more balanced perspective. Moreover, by responding to schadenfreude with grace and resilience, you're not only maintaining your own integrity, but also setting a powerful example. After all, the best revenge against envy isn't success. It's showing that their pettiness can't touch your inner peace. 5. The Saboteur Imagine you're about to give a crucial presentation at work. Suddenly, your colleague accidentally deletes your slides or forgets to inform you about a last-minute change in schedule. Welcome to the world of the saboteur, the envious individual who actively works to undermine your success. These subtle acts of sabotage are often hard to pin down, leaving you questioning whether you're just being paranoid or if someone is genuinely out to get you. The Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius offers wisdom that's particularly relevant here. The best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injury. When faced with a saboteur, it's tempting to retaliate or sink to their level. However, maintaining your integrity and continuing to excel despite their efforts is the most powerful response you can give. So, how do you spot these covert acts of undermining? Look for patterns of coincidences that consistently work against you. Does someone always seem to forget to pass on important information to you? Do they frequently interrupt you during meetings or take credit for your ideas? Pay attention to those who offer help, but somehow always make things worse. These could be signs of a saboteur at work. Remember, a single incident might be an honest mistake, but a recurring pattern suggests intentional undermining. Dealing with a saboteur requires a delicate balance of awareness and action. First, document these incidents. Having a record can help you identify patterns and provide evidence if you need to address the issue formally. Second, don't let paranoia consume you. As Epictetus said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Stay focused on your goals and maintain your performance. If possible, limit the saboteur's access to sensitive information or projects. Finally, consider addressing the issue directly if it persists. 
A calm, professional conversation might reveal underlying insecurities or misunderstandings that can be resolved. Remember, by handling the situation with grace and professionalism, you're not just protecting your work, you're demonstrating the strength of character that no saboteur can undermine. 6. Emotional Mirroring Have you ever shared exciting news with someone, only to be met with a reaction that feels off? Maybe their smile seems forced, or their enthusiasm rings hollow. Welcome to the world of emotional mirroring gone wrong, a subtle yet powerful indicator of envy or falsehood. When someone's emotional response doesn't quite match the situation, it's like watching an actor flub their lines. The disconnect is palpable, and it's often a dead giveaway that something's amiss beneath the surface. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This wisdom cuts both ways. It's not just about managing our own reactions, but also about observing the reactions of others. Genuine emotions tend to flow naturally and match the context of the situation. When envy or deceit is at play, however, this natural flow is disrupted, creating a noticeable mismatch. So, how can we spot these emotional misalignments? Pay close attention to the timing and intensity of reactions. Does someone's response seem delayed, as if they're taking a moment to manufacture the right emotion? Are they overcompensating with excessive enthusiasm that feels insincere? Look for inconsistencies between verbal and non-verbal cues. A person might say they're happy for you, but their tight smile and averted gaze tell a different story. These subtle discrepancies often reveal the truth hiding behind a carefully constructed facade. But here's the tricky part. Interpreting these signals requires nuance, cultural differences, personal communication styles and individual circumstances can all influence how people express emotions. The key is to look for patterns over time and to consider the broader context of your relationship. If someone consistently shows mismatched emotional responses, especially in situations where you're sharing successes or seeking support, it might be time to reassess the dynamics at play. Remember, as Marcus Aurelius advised, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. By honing your ability to recognize genuine emotional mirroring, you empower yourself to navigate relationships with greater clarity and discernment. 7. The Information Hoarder Ever feel like you're always the last to know? Meet the Information Hoarder that colleague or friend who seems to have a stranglehold on crucial information, doling it out in miserly portions or not at all. This isn't just about being out of the loop, it's a subtle form of power play, often rooted in envy or a desire to maintain an upper hand. The information hoarder thrives on being the gatekeeper, relishing the advantage that comes with exclusive knowledge. The Stoic philosopher Seneca once said, it is not because things are difficult that we do not dare. It is because we do not dare that things are difficult. This wisdom applies perfectly to dealing with information hoarders. The difficulty lies not in the information itself, but in our hesitation to confront the situation directly. Recognizing and addressing this behavior requires courage and discernment. So how do you spot an information hoarder in action? Look for patterns of selective sharing. Does someone constantly forget to include you in important emails or meetings? Do they provide incomplete information, leaving you scrambling to fill in the gaps? Pay attention to how they react when you seek information directly. An information hoarder might deflect, give vague responses, or even lie outright to maintain their perceived advantage. They might also use phrases like Oh, I thought you knew, or it must have slipped my mind to cover their tracks. Dealing with an information hoarder requires a strategic approach. First, document instances of withholding to establish a pattern. Then, consider addressing the issue directly, 
framing it in terms of team efficiency or mutual benefit rather than accusation. You might say, I've noticed I'm sometimes missing key information. How can we improve our communication to ensure everyone's on the same page? If the behavior persists, don't be afraid to seek information from alternative sources or escalate the issue if it's impacting your work or relationships. Remember, as Marcus Aurelius advised, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. By refusing to let information hoarding manipulate you, you reclaim your power and foster a more transparent, collaborative environment. Before we continue, if you're enjoying this video so far, please take a moment to hit the like button and leave a comment. And if you don't know what to say, just type Stoic Mindset. It really helps others find our content more easily. Your support means a lot to us and goes a long way in helping us create more great content. Now let's get back to it. 8. Body Language Betrayals We've all heard the saying, actions speak louder than words, but when it comes to detecting envy and falsehood, it's more accurate to say, involuntary actions scream the truth. Welcome to the fascinating world of body language betrayals. Those subtle, often subconscious physical cues that can reveal a person's true feelings or intentions, even when their words say otherwise. Mastering the art of reading these non-verbal signs is like having a built-in lie detector, helping you navigate the murky waters of human interaction with greater clarity and confidence. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. In the context of body language, we might adapt this to say, It's not what people say to you, but how their body reacts that reveals the truth. Our bodies often betray our true feelings before we can consciously control our reactions, making non-verbal cues a goldmine of information for the discerning observer. So what are some key body language betrayals to watch for? Start with the eyes. Often called the windows to the soul for good reason, Excessive blinking, avoiding eye contact, or darting eyes can all indicate discomfort or deceit. Pay attention to micro-expressions, fleeting facial movements that last just a fraction of a second but can reveal true emotions. Look for incongruence between words and gestures. If someone's nodding while saying no, or shaking their head while agreeing, something's amiss. Watch for defensive postures like crossed arms or turning away, which might signal discomfort or disagreement. But here's the catch interpreting body language isn't an exact science. Cultural differences, personal habits and context all play a role. The key is to look for clusters of behaviors and sudden changes in someone's typical body language. And remember, as Marcus Aurelius advised, if you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it, and this you have the power to revoke at any moment. Apply this wisdom to your observations. Don't jump to conclusions based on a single gesture, but use these non-verbal cues as pieces of a larger puzzle. By honing your ability to read body language, you're not just detecting deceit, you're deepening your understanding of human nature and enhancing your emotional intelligence. 9. Inconsistent Narratives Ever had that nagging feeling that something just doesn't add up in a story you're being told? Welcome to the world of inconsistent narratives, the telltale sign of a lie unraveling at the seams. Like a poorly written movie script, falsehoods often reveal themselves through contradictions changing details, or convenient memory lapses. Spotting these inconsistencies is like solving a puzzle, where each misaligned piece brings you closer to uncovering the truth. The Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius once said, Everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. 
This wisdom is particularly relevant when it comes to detecting inconsistent narratives. It reminds us to approach what we're told with a healthy dose of skepticism, always looking beneath the surface for the solid ground of truth. So, how do we catch these lies in the details? Start by paying close attention to the specifics of a story. Does the timeline make sense? Do the characters and their actions remain consistent each time the story is told? Watch for sudden changes in level of detail. Liars often elaborate excessively on unimportant points while glossing over crucial elements. Be wary of convenient memory lapses, especially if they occur only when difficult questions arise. Another red flag is the use of distancing language, such as referring to oneself in the third person or using passive voice to describe actions. But here's the tricky part. Not every inconsistency is a deliberate lie. Human memory is fallible and details can genuinely be forgotten or misremembered. The key is to look for patterns of inconsistency, especially in important or recent events. If you suspect you're dealing with an inconsistent narrative, don't be afraid to ask clarifying questions. A truthful person will usually try to resolve discrepancies, while a liar might become defensive or change the subject. Remember, as Epictetus advised, we have two ears and one mouth, so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. By honing your listening skills and paying attention to the details, You'll become adept at separating fact from fiction, navigating relationships with greater clarity and insight. 10. The Deflector Ever tried to have a serious conversation with someone, only to find the topic mysteriously changing faster than a chameleon's colors? Meet the deflector master of evasion and virtuoso of blame shifting. This person has an uncanny ability to dodge responsibility redirect attention and turn the tables quicker than you can say accountability. It's like trying to nail jelly to a wall, frustrating, messy and ultimately futile. But fear not, for with the right tools, you can spot these slippery tactics and keep the conversation on track. Charles R. Swindle once said, Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. This wisdom is particularly relevant when dealing with deflectors. Their evasive maneuvers can be infuriating, but maintaining your composure is key to addressing the real issues at hand. So how do you recognize a deflector in action? Watch for sudden topic changes when difficult subjects arise. They might use phrases like, that reminds me, or speaking of which, to subtly steer the conversation away from uncomfortable territory. Blame shifting is another classic move. Listen for statements that consistently place fault on external factors or other people. It's not my fault that, or if only they had, are common refrains. Pay attention to how they respond to direct questions. Do they answer vaguely or with another question? That's deflection 101. Dealing with a deflector requires patience and persistence. When you notice evasion tactics, gently but firmly bring the conversation back to the original point. You might say, I understand that's important, but can we first address? If blame shifting occurs, acknowledge their point, but refocus on their role. I hear that external factors played a part, but I'm curious about your perspective on. Remember the goal isn't to corner or shame them, but to foster honest communication. As Marcus Aurelius advised, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. By recognizing and calmly addressing deflection, you maintain control of the conversation and pave the way for more authentic interactions. 11. False modesty. Oh, this old thing? I just threw it on says your friend, casually flaunting a designer outfit that costs more than your monthly rent. Welcome to the world of false modesty, where humble brags and exaggerated self-deprecation reign supreme. It's like watching someone fish for compliments with a neon sign that screams praise me while pretending they're just minding their own business. 
This subtle form of boasting disguised as humility is not only annoying, but often a sign of deep-seated insecurity and a need for constant validation. The Stoic philosopher Seneca once said, True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. This wisdom cuts to the heart of false modesty. Those who genuinely embody this philosophy don't need to constantly seek approval or downplay their achievements. They find contentment in their accomplishments without the need for external validation. So how do we spot these masters of false modesty? Listen for statements that pair an accomplishment with a self-deprecating remark. I can't believe I won employee of the year. It must have been a slow year, is a classic humble brag. Watch for excessive self-deprecation that's clearly at odds with reality. Someone who consistently puts themselves down while excelling might be fishing for reassurance. Pay attention to body language too. A smug smile or expectant look while delivering a supposedly modest statement can be a dead giveaway. Dealing with false modesty requires a delicate balance. On one hand, you don't want to feed into their need for validation. On the other, responding with cold indifference might seem unkind. A good approach is to acknowledge their achievement without excessive praise. That's great, you should be proud, delivered in a matter-of-fact tone, can be effective. If the behavior is persistent and bothersome, consider addressing it directly but kindly. You know, you don't need to downplay your accomplishments. It's okay to be proud of what you've achieved. Remember, as Marcus Aurelius advised, the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injury. By modeling genuine humility and self-assurance, you set an example that might inspire others to drop the act and embrace authentic self-expression. 12. The Overpromiser I'll definitely have that report to you by tomorrow, declares your colleague for the third time this week. Sound familiar? Welcome to the world of the overpromiser, that person whose words soar high but whose actions remain firmly grounded. These individuals are like verbal hot air balloons, full of grand promises that never quite lift off. While their intentions might not always be malicious, their habit of over-promising and under-delivering can wreak havoc on trust and relationships. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, Don't explain your philosophy, embody it. This wisdom cuts straight to the heart of the over-promiser's dilemma. True reliability isn't about making grand declarations, but about consistently following through with actions, those who embody their commitments don't need to constantly vocalize them. So, how do we spot these serial over-promises? Listen for superlatives and absolutes in their language. Phrases like, I'll definitely, I promise, or you can count on me, might be red flags if used excessively. Pay attention to the frequency and scale of their promises. Are they constantly volunteering for tasks they can't possibly complete? Do their commitments seem disproportionate to their available time or resources? Watch for a pattern of excuses or rescheduling. If someone is constantly pushing back deadlines or offering elaborate explanations for why they couldn't deliver, you might be dealing with an overpromiser. Dealing with overpromisers requires a balance of empathy and firmness. Remember, their behavior often stems from a desire to please or a fear of disappointing others. Instead of calling them out harshly, try setting clear expectations and boundaries. You might say, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but let's set a realistic timeline. If the behavior persists, be direct about its impact. When commitments aren't met, it affects the whole team. What can we do to ensure this gets done? As Marcus Aurelius advised, Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. By modeling realistic commitment setting and following through on your own promises, you set an example that others can aspire to. Remember, actions speak louder than words, and in the case of overpromises, actions speak volumes. 13. Social Media Facades 
Scroll, double tap, repeat. Welcome to the curated wonderland of social media, where everyone's life seems to be an endless parade of exotic vacations, perfect relationships and avocado toast. But beneath the filters and carefully angled selfies lurks a breeding ground for envy and falsehood. It's a world where reality is often stretched thinner than the latest photo editing app, and the gap between online persona and offline truth can be as wide as the Grand Canyon. The Stoic philosopher Seneca wisely noted, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. This insight is particularly relevant in the age of social media, where our imaginations are constantly bombarded with idealized versions of others' lives. The challenge lies in distinguishing between authentic sharing and carefully constructed illusions designed to provoke envy or admiration. So how do we detect these online facades? Start by looking for consistency across platforms and between online and offline personas. Does someone's LinkedIn profile paint them as a workaholic while their Instagram showcases a life of leisure? That's a red flag. Pay attention to the frequency and tone of posts. Constant updates about achievements or possessions often mask insecurity. Watch for humble brags, those posts that feign modesty while subtly boasting. Ugh, hate when my Rolex gets scratched during my charity work is a classic example. Navigating this digital minefield requires a healthy dose of skepticism and self-awareness. Remember, what you're seeing is often a highlight reel, not the full story. If you find yourself feeling envious, take a step back. Ask yourself, is this triggering something I'm unsatisfied with in my own life? Use these moments as opportunities for self-reflection rather than self-criticism. As Marcus Aurelius advised, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Apply this wisdom to your social media interactions. Don't let carefully curated posts dictate your self-worth or happiness. Instead, focus on cultivating genuine connections and living authentically both online and off. By doing so, you'll not only immunize yourself against digital envy, but also contribute to a more honest and supportive online environment. As we wrap up our journey through the labyrinth of human behavior, it's clear that recognizing envy and falsehood is both an art and a science. We've explored 13 ways to spot these subtle yet powerful forces from the green-eyed glare to the carefully curated social media facade. But remember, this knowledge isn't meant to make us cynical or paranoid. Instead, it's a tool to navigate our relationships and interactions with greater wisdom and compassion. The Stoic philosophers taught us that true strength lies not in controlling others, but in mastering ourselves. As we become more adept at recognizing envy and falsehood in others, let's also turn that keen eye inward. Are we sometimes guilty of these behaviors? Do we let envy cloud our judgment or resort to falsehoods to protect our ego? By acknowledging our own flaws, we cultivate empathy for others who may be struggling with the same human weaknesses. So, what's the next step? I challenge you to apply these insights in your daily life. Pay attention to the subtle cues in your interactions. Practice responding to envy and falsehood with grace and understanding, rather than judgment or retaliation. And most importantly, strive to be the antidote, someone who celebrates others' successes genuinely, communicates honestly, and lives authentically both online and offline. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Have you encountered any of these signs of envy or falsehood in your own life? How did you handle it? Share your experiences in the comments below. And if you found value in this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated on more insights into human behavior and practical philosophy. Until next time, stay observant, stay compassionate and keep embracing the Stoic way.